embarrassed. Yeah, he could do that for us. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I would have kept my shirt on properly. Uh, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to embarrass you by showing some muscles. Uh, <laughs> you don't have any left. How much weight have you lost? Uh, I've lost about 12 kilos. I went on your jungle diet yep. and it's worked out perfectly. Looks so. fabulous, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank what you made you do that? Um, I was fat. And uh, <laughs> I thought maybe I'll not be fat. So I went on like a, a fitness regime for 12 weeks, dropped 12 kilos, and you know, now I'm ready for my next Ironman challenge, which is never. <laughs> what is being fat like? <laughs> um, look, I hope you never go through it. <laughs> Hey, this is not a, a, a dick picnic that carried you. You must have drawn a couple in your, in your day. Oh, absolutely. But I used to do mine more permanently with spray paint. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, Mum would say, why would you do that to our house and not somebody else? <laughs> now, I could not believe that this is your first solo stand-up. Like, yeah. I was sure that you'd been doing this for ages. Well, of course, I worked with Rosso for many years and we uh, did a lot of touring together on a lot of shows, but I started as a stand-up comedian 23 years ago as a solo stand-up and then uh, Rosso and I started working together and, and we kind of did a whole lot of festival work together and then for the last kind of 10 or 12 years I haven't worked uh, in, the, in the festival circuit, so this is my first ever show. There's only seven jokes in the show, so 23 years for seven jokes. <laughs> it's not a great average. Well, you do get into a groove, don't you, when you work yep. with someone else. I mean, it, yep. it's actually hard when, as a duo, you have so much yep. success yep. and you go out on your own. It's quite daunting, really. Yeah, but also, too, it means there's more glory for me, Steve, yeah. and that's what it's about. <laughs> um, I, I, like, I like the centre of focus. I think with, with a duo, you know, it's more theatrical. You're kind of bouncing off each other and it becomes more of a stage show. And with, I've noticed with, you know, doing a solo show, is it's really direct and it's really a, a really great connection with the audience right in front of you. You kind of relate. And my show's a little bit like, you know, a show and tell in, in parts as well. It's good I I knew you guys were mates, but I didn't realise how far you two went back. You've known each other for years. Well, this is the first person I met in comedy before I even started doing yep. comedy. Yep, we've been mates before comedy. So <laughs> he's before before comedy was invented. That's how <laughs> 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 that was in a community radio show, and the guy I co-hosted with knew, uh, knew Merrick, yep. and uh, he brought Merrick into the show, so, and, um, and yeah, we made sense. Yeah, yep. we did uh, some local community radio at Plenty Valley FM, just tearing up the airwaves there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got kicked off? Because I, got, you, I got kicked off. Did you swore too much? Yes, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's I didn't realise it was a strict Christian radio program. <laughs> Uh, look, you live and learn, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> live and learn. I want to go back to uh, the, your show. I saw it the other night. It's fan I absolutely loved it. It's getting five star reviews. It's, it's great. Is it better than the stuff you did with Rosso? Is he really the hero? He's got to a new level. Yeah. It's got to a new level. I think we'd say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Man of the Hour. You tell stories about people who have influenced your life. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't help but notice you, you, did, you almost, well, you told me after the show, actually, you almost left somebody out. Uh, yeah, look, I try to mention everybody in my life, all my family members, all the people I love, because I, I think they've helped shape me to become the man that I am. And that's the premise of the show. But I was struggling because I'd forgotten about my mum and my mum, what? of course, yeah, I know, I'd forgotten to have a story about mum. I had a, show, a story about everybody in my family except for mum. So I had to go away and write some material for mum so that when she came to the show, she would still love me. <laughs> <laughs> we're a very shallow family and if you don't, you don't get a mention... Uh, so it was, what's upset. the mum material? Was um, she happy with what you did with it? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Um, I actually, I talk about how my mum used to make all of my clothes as a kid uh, because, oh. yeah, because mum didn't want me to have too many friends. And <laughs> <laughs> So she said, I oh, know a way to cap that. I'll, um, I'll just make him some clothes. And she used to sew clothes and she used to knit clothes. And uh, that's why I'm 43 years of age. Oh. <laughs> oh! Sorry. Sorry. Just had a physical reaction there. So okay, hang on. Can we get clear on what this outfit oh. Okay. Oh, who's that cute Go kid? back to the other one. Go back to Go the, the orange the other one. Outfit. So okay. is, that a, is that a jumper? Or like yeah. what, no, what no, that's, that? an, that's an entire knitted suit, Wally. So that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's a jumper and pants, mate. Jumper like and pants. That, no, it was a two-piece number um, <laughs> and you can see me there with a the tiny little hammer there that was me just trying to rebuild my self-esteem <laughs> <laughs> so. you go around town and there's posters of everyone's shows everywhere but we saw on your Instagram today um, <laughs> A kind of interesting place for one of your posters to be. Oh, is that the yeah. kind of clientele you're wanting at your shows, or do you find or is that, that where yeah. the show's on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it with Shannon Noll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You can incorporate that into yeah. the show at no cost. Oh, thank you, thank you, Steve. I'll take a note there. Um, no, it is. That's actually the most amount of advertising I've had for my show, and it happened to be next to Club X. But of course, let's be fair. Stiff competition on both parts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come and see the show. Come and see the show.
the show, it's all like this. Yeah. <laughs> already working blue, that's good. Um, so you're a, you're a pretty successful dude. I mean, I know this is your first festival, so I was a stand-up. You've done a whole lot of stuff, but I heard something that sounds outrageous and I need you to set me straight. Oh, God. Did you turn down an offer to work with Jerry Seinfeld? I did. At Cobex? Yeah. <laughs> He said, meet me at this place. I went, oh, that looks dicey. Uh, no, there was a, many years ago, there was a, a, a TV offering going around for the marriage ref, which uh, Jerry Seinfeld, that was his big return to television after Seinfeld. This was going to be the first thing he did. And anyway, I went through a vetting process, and eventually Jerry Seinfeld himself had said, uh, I would like that guy, Merrick Watts, to host it in Australia. And they were going to do it first in Australia, and then they were going to map it out for the rest of the world. And I was, could not have been more excited about the prospect of working uh, with Jerry Seinfeld. I was going to fly to New York and meet him, the whole lot. And then I saw the marriage ref uh, just before it kind of went into that process of becoming formal. And I just decided that um, I was not the guy for it, so I, I, I turned it down. Because I think that they wanted somebody good. So. Well, you are good. Your show, Man of the Hour, is on now as part of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Go see it. It's awesome. Would you please thank Merrick Walsh. Thank you.